Hi, I'm Lance Schrader, Customer Technology Specialist out of our Marysville location. And I'm glad that you can join me as I go over many planner settings. If you have any questions after these videos, please contact your local landmark location. In this video, we're going to talk about the active pneumatic downforce system. I'm going to start off with some of the components. Up here on the tank, starting on some of the components. Right here we have our main pressure sensor. We have our solenoids and then our pressure sensors for each rank. In this case it's a 1795 so that's why we have two. Over here we have our air compressor. And Before each season we want to replace the oil, change the oil, and that takes air compressor oil. And then about every other day we want to come up here and check this sight gauge to make sure that our oil levels is at the correct level. We have our air filter here and we want to replace that every season as well as check to make sure it's clean uh, twice a week. The last thing on the tank that we want to do is we want to drain the water out of the tank about every other day. At the row unit, component wise, we're going to start off with our airbag. We want to make sure at the beginning of the season we charge our airbags to make sure there's no cuts or leaks as well as at these fittings, make sure they're not leaking. We also have gauge wheel sensors and those are on certain rows depending upon your configuration. Some planters have three, some planters have five. In this case, on this 1795 planter, there's five sensors, three on the front rank and two on the back rank. And on those same rows, you're gonna find your ride quality nodes. On electric drive planters, that's actually housed inside this row unit controller. And on Seedstar XP planters, it's mounted to the row unit here on the right side of the row unit. So looking at a seed trench after we've gone through, tied the closing wheels up in this example here, but this is what a good seed trench looks like. So we have some firm sidewalls. It's defined, it's not crumbled in. If I would take and kind of stick my seed digger down in there, it kind of comes in here. So it's not just totally compacted and not hard. Obviously soil conditions and soil types will affect this, but this is what we want to see for good seed to soil contact. And that gives our seed the best chance at producing maximum yield. An example of too little downforce is when the seed trench just pretty much crumbles really easily and you can push it in. So there's chances of pockets of air and not very good seed to soil contact and more importantly probably not achieving your correct depth. A good way of checking our downforce margin is by getting out and checking the resistance of the gauge wheels. Now we want to do this as we're planting and come to a stop with the planter in the ground. So if we have too small or too little margin, this gauge wheel is just going to turn freely like this. If we can't turn this gauge wheel at all, even no matter how hard we try or we can barely move it, that means we have probably too much margin. What we want to see for the proper amount of margin is there's some resistance on this gauge wheel but we still can turn it. Once again we want to check our seed trench and see how that looks as well to confirm what we're seeing here. Now I want to go through some screen operation of the active pneumatic downforce system on a Seedstar XP planner. First I want to show how to enable the system that's going to be done here in this lower left button. 
we'll click that. And then go ahead and put a check mark in this active PDF box. Once we do that, we can see our figure over here changes to a pie graph here on the left. And that pie graph is pretty important to us. Uh, this top left, we want all three to be filled in in order for the system to be engaged. This top left one, if it's filled in, says it has all the sensors available. The top right one, it needs to be filled in, and that tells us that we have speed. The bottom one tells us that the planner is down. And so it can be used as a diagnostic tool if one of these pieces of the pie isn't filled in, we know what to look for or what to diagnose. To go ahead and change margin, we can touch our target and go ahead and hit our arrows up to increase and hit the arrow to the right to accept. We'll see this arrow commanding it to go up and this number here should match this number. To evaluate performance of what the planner is doing, we will look at these bar graphs in the main portion of the page. We want those to be pretty close to the center line, if possible. That means we are reaching our target margin. If they're above or below, we may need to look at something that's going on or if our margin is set correctly. In the active pneumatic downforce system, there's also a pause feature, and that's found on this button here, kind of in the top right part of the screen. If we click that, that's going to pause the any changes happening for about 10 seconds. One instance where you might use this is if you're going across a 30-foot area where there's a major soil type change, and you don't want the downforce to either dump a lot of air or fill a lot of air just to go back to what it was previously because the active pneumatic downforce sims, systems, while they can adjust on the go, it does take a little bit of time to get there. So that is a pause feature that you can use just to keep your current setting. One thing to note is these sensors, depending on your planner, this one here has five, they work in conjunction with each other to create an average. So each row is putting the same amount down based on an average of what these sensors calculate. The next thing that I want to look at is our ride quality. And we can do that by touching the button here on the bottom. Our ride quality, we want these bars to be up pretty much close to the top. Over here on the right, it gives us some percentages, and we want those percentages to be pretty high, in the, in the mid to high 90s, if not 100%. That way we know our row unit is staying in the ground, and our seed is staying at that consistent depth that we have a row unit set at. So these bar graphs are just a visual representation of our percentages. If we want to look at a certain row on the downforce, we can touch that button and look at row details and change the row if need be. We can also change the alerts on this downforce system. By doing that, we can touch the bottom left button and hold it down for about three or four seconds and the alarms and limits setup page should come up. Here we can see our high margin and low margin alarm as well as the PDF low alarm. Once we're satisfied with that, we can hit the arrow to the right to go back to the main planner page. A few things to note is this number here where it's showing 75 right now. This is the actual downforce. We don't necessarily care much about that when we're running in the active system, we care about this margin number right here. A few diagnostics and tests we can do is if we go to tab G here in the upper right, 
and then we can go to the sensor and then from this drop down list we can find downforce so we look and see how many sensors that we have and we can look at each sensor here and see what row it is on see if it's enabled and what we want to see across the bottom here and the simulator doesn't do a very good job portraying that but what we want to see here for each sensor is a value or an actual number we don't want to see dashes so if the planner's up we want to see that these are zero if for some reason they're not we can come over here and hit this zero button and it will zero all of the downforce sensors out Let's say, for instance, one sensor was giving us fits and going bad. Since the system runs at an average, we can disable one of them by unchecking the box. And then it will just go off of all the other sensors that are enabled. So something to get you by if uh, you need to keep going before you can get to your local store and get a new downforce sensor. From downforce, we can also look at our ride quality, and the same applies here. We don't want to see dashes. We want to see an actual value for each sensor, and we can also uh, disable or enable those. Last one I want to cover is this PDF air pressure, and so it should give a value right here instead of dashes. If we seem that our downforce is off or acting really erratic, uh, what we might do is take all the air pressure out of the system and make sure that this value is zero. If it's not, we can hit this arrow to the right and that will zero our PDF air pressure on our tank. One last thing that we can look at, if I hit the top button in the right, if any of these buttons are flashing orange or red, that means they need to be evaluated and checked. On this downforce button, we can look at our margin and we can see the low, the high, and the average margin across the planter. Once again, this margin number is the one we care about. We don't necessarily care about what that planter is actually putting down because that will vary on solar resistance.